Max diff or best worst scaling is used to estimate a set of scores for a set of items. Max diff exercises are made up of a series of tasks that ask respondents to choose a best and a worst among a subset of the total items. Breaking larger lists up into carefully designed subsets, typically of four to six items at a time, makes a daunting task, like ranking 30 or more items in a traditional ranking question, much more approachable for respondents and yields better results. In this video, we'll go over how to add and configure a MaxDiff exercise in Discover, show how the exercise appears to respondents, and then view the results. To start, we'll add a MaxDiff exercise to our survey by clicking the Add button, then selecting MaxDiff in the menu. The exercise is then inserted into our survey. Let's assume we own a bakery and want to figure out which cookies we should sell. Running a max diff will be the best way to find out which flavors are preferred by our customers. In the question text field of my max diff exercise, we will ask our respondents to select their favorite and least favorite cookie flavors. Next, we need to define the cookie flavors for our customers to choose from. You'll notice that the exercise starts with six blank items. To use a max diff exercise in this software, you need a minimum of six items. I've created a list of cookie flavors in another document. I'll insert the list of flavors by clicking into the first item field, then using the keyboard shortcut Command V on a Mac or Control V on a Windows computer. The live preview on the right hand side of the screen will automatically update and show an example of a task our respondent could see. In this case, to help our respondents visualize the cookie, we can insert images to show them what each one looks like. We can add an image by clicking on the pencil icon located on the right of each list item. Once the edit menu has opened, we click on the image icon in the toolbar, click upload, then select the image file on our desktop. Type in some alt text for accessibility and hit insert. We'll do this for each item in our list. To finalize the exercise configuration, we'll need to adjust a few settings. We'll click on the gear icon and a menu of MaxDiff settings will slide out. The top sections of this settings page are fields that we've already entered in information for on the question card, the question text, and the list of items. Below these settings is where we need to make some adjustments. In the question text, we told the respondents to select their favorite and least favorite cookie flavor, so we need to adjust the best and worst labels to reflect that verbiage. Let's change the best label to favorite and the worst label to least favorite. The items label field allows us to insert a label above the list of items that the respondent sees. We can enter cookies for an items label and it will appear above the flavors in the center column of the MaxDiff exercise, as you can see in the live preview to the right. An items label is not required, but can be a helpful reminder to respondents of the category of items they are evaluating. The last setting under the general tab is a toggle to show exercise progress number of tasks. Tasks are the technical term for the questions within the MaxDiff exercise. Displaying the counter may be helpful for respondents to see the progress they're making through questions that look similar. We see that there will be seven tasks. The software algorithm automatically calculated and generated a design that should offer a robust model for dependable results with our current list of 11 items. If we quickly navigate to the Advanced tab, we see that the design generator suggests showing five items per each of the tasks or questions and seven total tasks. This will show each item in our list an average of 3.18 times to each respondent. The recommended design is specific to the number of items we included in our items list earlier on. If we were to change the list by adding or removing items, the recommended design would be adjusted accordingly. This area is a bit too complex to discuss in this basic video. Rest assured, you should be able to just go with the default recommended design and get great results. If you are interested in learning more about what makes a MaxDiff exercise design, then check out our detailed documentation and additional videos. Okay, let's close the MaxDiff settings now. Finally, the survey is configured. In order to invite respondents to take our survey, we need to publish it. To do this, we click the blue publish button in the upper right hand corner. The survey audit menu opens and tells us that there are no errors that need to be addressed. We'll click publish again to save our survey changes to the live survey. To take the survey as a respondent, we navigate to the collect page and either copy the survey link by clicking the copy link button and pasting it into our browser, or simply clicking the take live survey button. 
The MaxDiff exercise looks just like it did in the live preview display in the Survey Builder. We can go through the tasks and make selections as if we are a respondent to collect some data. After we're done fielding the survey, we can view the results by visiting the analysis page. The list of items is displayed in a chart in order of highest to lowest preference score. According to the five respondents that answered our survey, the top three favorite cookie flavors are chocolate chocolate, white chocolate chip, raspberry pistachio, and sugar. At my bakery, I could sell these cookies with confidence that these flavors would be more preferred on average than flavors further down the list. Of course, proper analysis of MaxDiff exercise results can be much more nuanced and complex than just taking the top three items from my rank ordered list. You can learn more about these analysis methods and concepts through our other documentation and videos. MaxDiff, or Best Worst Scaling, is a powerful tool for estimating reliable preference scores for a list of items that might otherwise be overwhelming to do with traditional ranking questions. The MaxDiff scores have more discriminatory and predictive power than rating questions such as the 5-point or 10-point scale. It helps you make more accurate decisions by giving you the tools to uncover what people prefer. That's the MaxDiff exercise and discover.